Welcome to Kangaroos, the podcast. We provide incredibly local content for our incredible local realtors. Rachel, did you know that Kangaroos provides social media content for realtors? I was aware, but I'm glad that everyone is now. Everyone is now aware. Welcome to the podcast, Rachel. What is our question of the day? Which type of food brings more comfort, sweet or savory? This is a good question. I don't think I have a a sweet tooth. I think I tend to lean toward the savory. Um, You know, I I get to pick uh, my birthday meal and I just say I want meat. I don't really care what it is as long as it is meat. Um, But my wife would beg to differ that I've got a pretty big sweet tooth. I, I consistently eat candy. I love hot tamales and Sour Patch Kids and Haribo gummy bears and ice cream. And where do cinnamon rolls fall? Maybe that's the question because they are both sweet and savory. Does that count? What's your Ish. What's your favorite comfort food? I don't know. I was I asked the question. I'm sitting here trying to think. Are we defining comfort food as maybe how we're defining it would help? Is it like stress? The food we run to in times of stress or just the thing that we like to eat the most? <laughs> Because those yeah. are different. That's fair. Usually whenever I'm eating my feelings, it's it's cinnamon rolls and pastries for sure. Okay. Donuts. Stress, I think for me, would be savory then. And it's like chips and queso. Oh, that's never just go wrong. That's just Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> you could never go wrong, but that's the food I want when I don't really want ice cream when I'm stressed. I want chips. What is our one minute marketing term? Knowledge base, which will prove to be really convenient in about five minutes when we hop into the real topic of the podcast, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a repository for information for products or services or an industry or a foundation of information. So if you talk to any marketing firm, they'll probably put this in more formal speak and say, it's a place, it's like a formal place on your website where you hold a bunch of knowledge for someone who's trying to find you um, or find more information, it's like a frequently asked questions or a certain set of guidelines for our client. It's all housed in this little spot on the website. We're going to talk about it a little less formally and how an individual might have a knowledge base. So just think more broadly. We'll, we'll think more broadly about it today, but it can be kind of formal. It just depends on the context and the conversation. So for a good knowledge base, does it need to be an intentional page on my website or is this something that um, could happen accidentally? The best answer is probably both the end. So today we'll talk about how your social feed, where, I mean, obviously that's what we focus on here is how your social feed represents yourself, but how you turn your social feed into a knowledge base. Mm -hmm. So if your potential clients are millennials now, everyone, let that make us all feel old. That's where the most money is held. The generational shift has happened. That is where they're starting their searches for all services, but also for homes and realtors. And if that's that meaning is that's where your potential clients are. Part of making your job easier is exposing your potential audience and normalizing realty things in your everyday conversation on your social feed. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. You're just using what you already know about and knowledge that you want to share with others. And this is a really good channel to do it. Right. It's pro- it's the channel where your audience is the largest. Your voice can go much farther online than it can at the grocery store when you run into someone or even at your church or, or whatever you're a part of community community wise, unless you're in front of thousands of people on a regular basis which most of us aren't, then online is where that actually is happening. So if I'm a Californian wanting to move to Nashville, I'm going to search for an agent, find somebody that is knowledgeable simply by going through their posts and seeing what they have to offer. I might look at several different agents until I find somebody that that I connect with. Um, So it's really, really important to have your posts 
being intentional, intentional posts, intentional, meaningful, thoughtful posts. Right. So that in the same way that it might be people from California or coastal regions moving to the mid state, we know that that's the case. I think if you're in this industry at all, this is not a shock or new information. Um, but also if I'm a first time home buyer, I want to make sure that there's someone that is going to be able to hold my hand and walk me through everything and isn't maybe just starting out, or even if they are just starting out, feels like they have a really good head on their shoulders, that they understand the whole process, that I'm not going to have to like try to figure it out by myself. Um, if, like you said, if we're moving to the Nashville area and we don't know anything really about Nashville, we want to know what there is to offer, what's most important to me. Have you talked about walkable neighborhoods? Have you talked about the best restaurants? Have you talked about where I can buy plants from my yard, all those things that I would need to learn having not lived in Nashville before. Or if personality is important to me, I wanna know that you have one. So if it's all I see is you posting a picture about your closing, I don't know that you're relatable or what your quote bedside manner might be. Maybe you're really boring or maybe you're not, but I wouldn't know because you've not said anything about it online. Um, So those are things that your feed really needs to reflect. And so let's take another rabbit trail because that's what we do here (laughs) is take rabbit trails. I think when we have had conversations with clients, our clients, kangaroos clients, so people who who are using kangaroos as a service to them, we hear, the market's hot. I have so many clients. I don't even know what to do with. I'm closing houses in my sleep. (laughs) I don't have time for social media because I don't have time to log on. And we understand that Nashville particularly is crazy right now, but what it will not be forever is crazy. So what you're doing now is building a foundation for a year from now or eight months from now or six months from now or six years from now when the market has changed. And as we all know, it will. But what happens if you haven't built that foundation and you're having to compete maybe a little more for clients, whereas that's not as much of the case now and other people have built that foundation and they're going to win because they're the ones that people are going to find. Well, I, we talked a little bit about how often I grab coffee with random people as well. And so 99% of the time I have Googled you, I have search for you on Instagram. I've searched for you on Facebook. I've, I am researching you to see if you're crazy before I have coffee with you, or it's to say, Ooh, you like to do X, Y, or Z. And so now I've got a topic to talk about during our conversation. People moving here are doing the same thing. Instead of just grabbing coffee, they're doing a one of the biggest purchases of their life with you. And so they want to find somebody that is knowledgeable, but also one that they can connect with. And so you need to, in your posts, show off that you know the area, that you know Nashville, that you know all the right things, but also that you're a human. And so it's a it's a both and, but the knowledge base is super, super important. Marketing yourself as a business, if you're in this industry, is super important. Having a cohesive strategy is important. You do not have to know everything, but you do need to know enough. So either you know enough to hire someone to help you or you know enough to do it yourself. Those are the basic two options. So I joke and say, like, make this part of your continued education. And no one mm-hmm. loves doing that, but we got to do it. Who are successful usually are the ones that continue to educate themselves, right? In any field, whether it be medical or this or anything else. That being said, I think the phrase that comes to mind is content diversity. So a good strategy employs content diversity, which means you have a wide knowledge base. You know lots and lots of things. Why would you not tell people all the things you know in order to make their lives better? It's not that you're saying, I'm a know-it-all and look at me and how great I am. It's the posture of, I don't know all this and I want you to know it because it will be helpful to you. That's right. 
So it's more than just here's a new house and here's a closing and here's a new house and here's a closing. It's you, you are more than just that. You have unique personality traits that are specific to you. And so how do you let those shine? How do you amplify those things? You've got hobbies, you geek out on certain things like nobody else. And so those are the things that are going to separate you from everybody else. Andrew, when you do your little searches on people before your coffee dates, um, if they have not posted in a year, what does that say to you? It means I got to dig a little bit deeper. Um, so then am I going to other places or, man, I'm walking into this blind. Um, usually people have emailed me and said, so-and-so told me to email you. And so I've got at least that. And so then I'll have to do more research and say, you know, how do you know so-and-so? Um, it just becomes a lot more work. And and then sometimes you just got to take a chance and that's, I can do that on a $3 cup of coffee, not on a humongous investment of a house. Yeah. Hard truth. Number two, we work with a lot of people. And when we start working with people just so that we know how to be the most helpful, we do an audit of their current social media. So once someone comes to us and says, we'd really like your help, we're going to turn around and look at all the places that we can find information about you so that when we do meet, we're, we're able to start, have a starting point. We pull up feeds all the time of people who are great realtors who are, like literally probably make the most at their brokerages and have posted maybe like four times in the last year. Like there might be a post Merry from Christmas. Chris, Merry Christmas. Yeah. And we're in July, like literally we're in July. And so if you have not posted something in six months, I wonder how successful you really are. One, two, if you're alive, like if someone has not posted on social media, especially if they used to be pretty active and then are no longer active, I kind of wonder, like, did something happen? Are they trying to make a statement? Are they hurt? Is this a cry for help? Like all the things that I might wonder if nothing has happened in a really long time. So it's one thing for the people who know you and they're like, oh, they've just been super busy the last six months and they've had surgery or they just had a new kid or they bought a new house and they're moving, all those things. But for the people who don't know you, I'm probably going to keep looking. And if I find another realtor who seems to offer pretty much the same thing, but posts every week. They seem to be more active. Perceptions, reality might not be fair, but that's kind of the case. You know, one thing that strikes me whenever I see somebody that is super active on social versus somebody that's not is I can I feel like I can get a hold of them. So I may not know their email address, but if I can reach out to them through DMs and I know that they're posting at least once a week that they're going to check that DM. Now, if you haven't posted anything since Christmas, man, I'm just kind of shooting in the dark too of like, I hope this gets to them. I don't have an email. This is the only way to reach them. Um, And that's not your best foot forward if you're trying to be in the sales industry. So if somebody wants easy access to you, DMs is a great option. But man, if you're not active in it, then, then that's a wasted space. It's a wasted space and it's a potentially harmful space because right. if you have an account and most people do, whether or not they're active or not is a whole other thing. But if that's the way that I'm finding you and I reach out to you via DM and I don't get a response pretty like within 48 hours, I would yeah. say, then I have zero confidence or very low confidence that if I reach out via phone, text, email, yeah that you're going to respond to me. So if you are going to have a presence on social, you have to commit to being active and present on social, not just this thing you have to check a box. Well, and not even if you are wanting to be on social, it's you should be on social and you should be active. If you want to do this thing, if you want to do realty, this is where you got to be. Yeah. And I think that's a shift that's even happened. Um, especially since COVID, which is the bad word that we don't like to all talk about, but think about what happened in that era of time is people were doing everything online. So personal story, we sold our house and bought our house in spring of 2020 
spring, summer of 2020 when COVID was like paramount. Like you didn't go to the grocery store. I signed every document online. Like I signed everything via e-signature. I did not go anywhere until we closed. And that was three months later, you know, or however long the closing window was, 60 days, 90 days. And that was when COVID had sort of ramped back down. But our, our realtor was telling us stories about how she like literally hadn't spent time with her client in person. They were closing things. I mean, the way that we showed our house was like people had to wear booties and use hand sanitizer and like have masks on. And it was all these signs that were all over my house that said like, please don't touch handles. It was very different. It was a very different world. But what that world did was ramp up everyone's socials as a form of business. And that changed the way that business was done for good. It won't stop. The new normal is what we're living in now. It's not going back. There's not this whole go back to normal. We are in the normal. It's just changed. The world has changed. So the point is, is that you need to post frequently and back to the point you were making at the beginning is don't just post the same thing over and over. It's great that you're closing houses. It's great that you're listing houses. Those are things you should talk about, but you should talk about all the other things you know too. I want to know um, the trends on mortgage rates. That's really helpful as a potential buyer. If I'm on the fence of listing my house, then you posting, hey, mortgage rates are ticking up. And they're probably not going back down. I'm watching these trend lines. I'm reading everything coming out of the Fed. They're probably not going down. So if you want to secure a mortgage rate under 6%, you need to do it this summer and not wait till this fall because all signs point to it slowly, you know, raise it, rising this year. And that's huge if you're buying a house, especially in this area when it's really hard to get anything for under a half million dollars. And I laugh, but that's, we all know that that's the case. The average cost in Nashville is ri rising pretty crazily, honestly. But <laughs> I was trying to think of a nice word for all those who live here and have for a while. It's just insane, but maybe not if you're not from here. When we met with our realtor long ago, when we moved to Nashville, before it was cool to move here. Um, he walked us through the map and said, he, you know, he, he can't legally tell us what neighborhoods are good or, or bad, but he, you know, was telling us about the neighborhoods, about what, what stores are good, what parks are near there and like what, what things there are to do. And he was super knowledgeable just of the areas. And so that made it very easy for us as a family to decide where we wanted to live. So in the same way, your social could be that window into what neighborhoods are good. Um, you know, legally, you can talk about what stores are there, um, but you can't say, don't, don't live in that neighborhood. Um, so instead of sitting across the table at a coffee shop with a old folded paper map that he gave us, um, now you've got a digital way to show off a lot about Nashville. That's right. While we're talking about content diversity here, it's not only just the types of content you post in, in relation to the format. So it's not just posting pictures. It's also varying the media type that you're posting. So as much as we all kind of grown together, that video and reels are where things are going we don't make the rules just saying like don't hate us you can hate the instagram and facebook's of the world but that's what they're prefer they're preferring they're preferring <laughs> they're rewarding is the right <laughs> word i'm looking for um they are rewarding video formats so it's time to learn to do reels people are going to meet you eventually you don't even have to like really be seen in the reel if that makes you so uncomfortable, but you can add listing pictures and make a reel of your new listing or make a reel of all the closings that you've had at the end of the year or sync any kind of photos to music and call it a reel and throw some text on there. Instagram makes it pretty easy to do that. You've done harder things. We all have. We might not <laughs> like it, but usually things... It's like the rule about, or the saying, I guess, about, you know, it takes you four years to do something you've been avoiding and it only takes you 10 minutes to do and you feel so much better. 
same concept applies. So all this to say, this is a hard truths episode. We're usually a lot more fun, but we're <laughs> just giving, we're giving it to you straight today. This one and was fun. This one, this one is us being loving by telling you the hard truths. If you want people to know how great you are and how much you really do have to offer in the way of help to them and how you can serve them really well, you have to put it out there. Yeah. And people don't just know. They're not just going to know that you're this great. I mean, does That's that right. happen on occasion because someone has referred you? Sure. But that is really by and large, not the way that things have shifted. So. Good word. So if you still have questions, please reach out to us. Andrew at kangaroos.com, Rachel at kangaroos.com. Let's wrap it up with our local question. Which is, where is the best place in the Nashville area to get a steak dinner? Oh, man. Okay. And this is like not a budget steak dinner. We're just going to talk about the best steak dinner. Okay. Man. Uh, honestly, <laughs> in the in my backyard is where I, I feel like I cook a good steak. Um, and Rachel claims to make a really good steak too, everybody, just for the record, she may not say it, but she's got a secret recipe, a secret technique on how to cook one. Um, so which will not share until Andrew's actually had it and validated that I am right because I'm not wrong on this. Just FYI, it um, might be unconventional, but it is a good steak and he, I, he does not I'm believe ready. me. I'm ready to try it anytime. Okay, um, well, we'll work on that and get back to all of y'all. He will have to eat his words and his steak. Amen. The I think the standards of cane prime or bourbon steak, oak, those oh. are are pretty good, <laughs> pretty good steaks. Um, I think you go to any of those for more of the ambiance or to you know check it off of. Um, check it off your list but the best steak that i've had uh is at bastion so if you can go and you can not sit at the bar but sit in the kitchen um in the little back room and get the feast and they bring you a giant t-bone and it is delicious so bastion they get my seal of approval okay i have never been to bastion so i don't know what to say about that i will trust your judgment because steak is your comfort food, but right. I, maybe I just won't say it. I'll just say out of all the places Andrew named previously, the one that I agree with the most is Cane Prime. It's great. Cane Prime is great. You should go there. You should go there you at should. least once. Also, if we're going to talk about places that are not quite as expensive, it's still a decent steak. Stony River's coffee cured steak is pretty it's good. It's my favorite. Yeah, it really is good. I thought we were trying to, it's budget. It, to me, it's, we can get in and out. My wife and I can get in and out of there for under $100. And uh, it's it's great. It's everything I need in a steak. Yeah. You're not going to get out of Cane Prime for under $100 unless you, you might not. have like one drink and an appetizer. So. Yeah. It's delicious. It's definitely worth those special occasions. And to go at least once, I would say you want to experience it once if you can. But there are also great affordable places to get steak and Stony River is one of those. It's great. Espresso rubbed filet with a wedge salad. Done. It sent done wedge and done. salad. That yeah. might be another comfort food of mine. It's delicious. Yeah. Makes so hungry. would you please rate and review us? Uh, it helps us immensely for uh, other people to find us. So if you are enjoying the content we are giving out, please give us five stars. And then also, if you're a realtor and you need some help, sign up for Kangaroos. $65 a month. We send you a month's worth of content to push out into your own socials. Um, and we'd love to help you be successful. Please reach out if you've got any questions. Andrew at Kangaroos, Rachel at Kangaroos.com. All right. We'll see y'all next week. <laughs>